Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. A bit later than usual, but uh, I don't think we had any live trading room ever since the uh, the 30th or the 31st, maybe even. So uh, just in case I didn't talk to you during the educational webinar last week, Happy New Year. Happy uh, 2014. Hope that it will be a great trading year and year in general, of course, as well. This is Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. First of all, though, we're going to take a look at no risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek these advice from independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. Alrighty, thank you for your attention. Today's specific topic is moving averages, in fact. So we'll be using the moving averages to define the trend. If we can, of course, easily do with moving averages, they're a perfect trend definition, in fact. We're not maybe perfect, but a very good one. Probably nothing is perfect. Uh, they're good in uh, filters, establishing uh, triggers, so it's, it's a very useful tool. Before we do that, though, we'll first of all start with the calendar. Let me drag over here the webinars. Today, tomorrow we have trend lines, by the way. Uh, yesterday, Tarantula went through the weekly FX recap, and Wednesday he'll go through the introduction to volume spread analysis, and on Thursday we'll both look at Forex uh, news trading. Well, anyhow, let me go to the uh, calendar together. We do have a bit of a busy week, in fact. We have uh, nothing necessary today, but tomorrow we have FOMC statement and ADP. On Friday we have uh, NFP, so usually it doesn't happen that both the FOMC meeting minutes and NFP are mentioned, uh, are, are released, sorry, within the same week, so I've, not, it doesn't happen too often. Uh, this week we both have both, in fact, so. And we have Thursday Euro and Pound interest uh, rate announcement, so it's pretty busy. Alrighty. Your dollar. Well, we're going to take a look at moving averages, as I said, but we can take a look at other concepts too. If you have a particular thing you want to look at, let me know. But otherwise, I'll just do the normal multiple f time frame analysis uh, on all the currency pairs that uh, we normally look at. So this is the Euro dollar four hour chart. Obviously, there was a very good channel here that has been broken on the Euro dollar, and we've had that channel on the chart for quite a while. You can have a top line like this or a bit lower. And uh, the moving averages are confirming that as well. You can see price was above the band, the, the black band here, for quite a while. But we've recently had a pretty good drop ever since the beginning of this year, uh, some dollar strength relatively. Uh, and we've seen a follow through from 138 down to 135.50. Let me open my drawing tool as well. I don't have it open yet. Good. So, is this just a correction from upside, or is this a, a bigger reversal? It's a bit early to tell, in my opinion. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Maybe that will happen. Uh, will help. Sorry, from a daily perspective, there seems to be, uh, of course, still support very close by. We maybe have this resistance line that could be used, for example. You can still see. Oh. If I can, yeah, you can still see that we're in a support. One could even use this as a trend channel like that. You can see that there's a potential for support here, trend line. But also, every time the currency goes back to this uh, to this green band, well, not every time, but it has used it here twice as support. And it was about the average here in this range, and here too it was support. So you can see that this bottom is still important. In the meantime, though, we might move still a bit lower, but you can see that there is a potential support either lower or here because we are in a daily uptrend. It's difficult to uh, deny that at the moment. Doesn't necessarily mean, though, that we have to continue with that trend immediately. Also, if you do look at this point, that is a resistance line right there. Plus, of course, from the weekly perspective, we know 
that there is a, uh, a trend line like this coming in and also a fib right here. So if we analyze that, we stopped at the 61.8. And if we break above this Bacanta line, let me make that a bit different color so that everything is clear. If we break above this brown line and break above the 6.8, there could be a trade up to the 78.6. That's above the 138.90, though, up to 143. Now, of course, if we don't break above and we actually use this trend line as a bounce, if we then break below this daily trend line, we could make a fall to test these bottoms right in here. So let's put a line there as well, like this. So at the moment, in this wedge, there's even a bigger wedge line here and here as well, of course. So that's how we can space it out. Uh, on the weekly chart, moving averages really don't mean much. They're all bunched together, as you can see. So if anything, we can conclude that basically price is going sideways as the trend lines are also indicating. So back to the daily. A breakout trade to the upside above here, but we're moving down at the moment. And a breakout potentially, I would say, we would have to probably break really below, let's see, I would say below these moving averages on the daily to really have a, a severe downtrend. All right, let me take off this fib because we don't need it for the moment. So yeah, that's the basic of the game. Is this a reversal, the beginning of the reversal, so, or is this just a uh, retracement like this was as well? And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on the moving averages and trend lines to get an answer for that. We could even move this a bit higher maybe, like this. And you can see we have three touches on that trend line right now where I have the red circles. So basically a break below that line could also be the first confirmation of a continuation break to the downside. And uh, the upside, we would have to take a look at the four hour. I would say a break above this four hour fractal could already be enough or, you know, to have an indication that we might be bouncing here. It could also be breaking this trend line like that. Let me show you on the one hour chart. It's a bit steep, this trend line, of course, obviously, very steep. But a break above that could be we could be challenging these tops again. So let me zoom into the 15. If we keep this in mind, we have a bottom trend line here. We have resistance here, which means that there is a potential maybe to retest this top or break and retest this bottom. If we keep that in mind, let's take a look at the 15. At the moment, moving averages are flat. So that means there's really no momentum at the moment. Really no momentum. Let me put in a different type of template. Yeah, you can see totally flat here. No no angle on the 50 minute chart. These are two sets of moving averages. Two sets of three moving averages. And I think for the euro dollar from an intraday perspective, this was a long term analysis. But from an intraday perspective, if we look at the 15 and the one hour, we just would need first to wait, I think, for an impulse. We need price today to show a direction to have a, a better idea what the uh, movement of today could be. I think if we get, for example, one or two hourly candles like this and then a small retracement, then probably the, the today will be upside. Of course, the opposite would be true if we get like two bearish candles like that and then maybe some two small hours candle like that, then today will probably be a down day. So that's what I would be looking for probably to, to, to gauge whether uh, you know, 
uh, this how today would develop. The, f the first hourly candles could be very important because this uh, at the moment is at a bounce or break spot, right? Either break this trend line as we said, or will it break this steeper line and bounce off the trend line to the upside and retest a bigger trend line like that, right? This upside or maybe this downside. At the moment, we got uh, a bit of a unsure situation with these two tops and bottoms being key horizontal levels. I think one, if one of those two breaks, that will probably be the direction of the day. One thirty six fifty four is the top here, and one thirty five sixty eight is the bottom here. Price is now one thirty six twenty. We can take a look. We haven't done that in a while. At quickly at the Camarilla indicator. All right. What does it say? Uh, let's see. H4 at 136.70, up to 137.10. And L4 at 135.80, down to 135.46. Yeah, that's about, it's not exactly the same. But roughly, the, the idea is roughly, of course, similar in the sense that I was waiting for a break of this top, but the H4 is a bit higher. And I was waiting for a break of this bottom, but the L4 is a bit higher. That's roughly the only difference, as you can see. Otherwise, the Camarilla pivot point indicator roughly indicating the same Right, we're right at the pivot. We're right at the moving averages as well. And when the moving averages are overlapped that much, what does that really mean? Let me show you on the 15 again. Right, that means that price is not able to give a direction at the moment. If prices and moving average are so on top of each other, let me show you one more time. Or here you can even see it here very well. Look at the green and, uh, and black band here. And there's no direction. The moving averages are flat. Right? There's no um, momentum in price to get an angle. You can see that price had an angle when, when it was falling here. Price was underneath the averages. And look how steep the moving averages were. There was an angle. There was a trend. There, there isn't that right now. So when this happens, and you want to intraday trade, uh, it's better to wait. Well, one could always speculate, but it's like flipping a coin. At the moment, we wouldn't see, unless, of course, you have something specific trading plan for yourself. That's something else. But at the moment, from the moving average perspective, I don't see anything that makes sense here, as you can see. One hour is a bit of a mix, because we're actually prices at the black band and below the green band, so maybe a bit downtrend, but here they're also mixed, as you can see, they're on top of each other. And on the daily chart, price is actually below the band, the black band, but above the green band. So I would like to see more alignment here. Either let the one hour continue, and a four hour will also turn bearish the moving averages or let the moving averages become bullish here and then they'll be aligned with the four hour chart as well. So we can keep an eye on this 15 uh, throughout the session. Let's move on maybe. Anyone else have any, any um, preference? I guess we can always go to the pound dollar, right? But it will be interesting to see how this euro dollar moves. We have one news event, I think. 
or we have a couple in fact we have unemployment change on the on the unemployment rate in Germany well that could certainly have its impact that's top of the hour so price could be very choppy till that time and then we could see maybe a spike because of the news and then we probably see a retrace after the news event and then some some continuation is uh, is my idea pound dollar let's take a look pound dollar is at the green band on the four hour chart last time that was a bouncing spot And uh, we can see, if we zoom out just a bit more, take a look. This uh, green band has been roughly the continuation for the uptrend. It was here, here, here. It struggled a bit more here, but eventually it did continue up and here. Price has been above that green band ever since that moment, and this is that moment here is roughly mid-July. Do you see that? So, you know, the four-hour green band, if you're intraday trading, really, uh, you know, no need to look at the green band as a daily chart in a way because this itself already is showing a past of six months. So that's, that's a lot of price action. No need to necessarily look more most cases to look higher but uh, four hour chart definitely still in that uptrend just looking at that moving averages but of course here too we had a recent fall so is that a retracement like this and like this for more upside here too I would say the four hour fractal is a key level just like the bottom roughly here too we had a small bottom break which still went up so we have to be careful but uh, this is an uptrend if we you can see once we broke this fifth four hour fractal that's when we continued so I would expect the same with this four hour fractal So that is a key level for upside and the continuation of upside potentially. Uh, downside, we do have some trend line like this. Obviously, if we break that trend line and this fractal, we might be reversing deeper. But we have to realize, too, that this fall, because it's been so steep, will eventually have some retracement before we might continue. daily chart you can see price is actually at the black band here you can see black band the price is right at it now so this from a daily perspective could be a bouncing spot probably important level will be this 162.50 Right? That is a top here, a top here, a top here, bottom here. Once that level gets broken, roughly speaking, you know, it's, it's, it's not an ex a totally exact level, but roughly 162.50, 163, then there could be some uh, bigger retracement on this pound dollar to, for example, retest this bottom maybe. And also these moving averages. So let me make this green quickly. Alrighty. Now, of course, there could, there definitely, you know, one could see also in the euro dollar. By the way, some hints of reversal potential. I'm not saying I don't want to exclude that necessarily because there was divergence between these tops of the four-hour. I forgot to mention that. 
also some divergence on the daily chart between these tops. Um, so that could cause the uptrend to, to pause. Logically, the pound has the same effect between these two tops. That is a potential. Also, one thing, if you look at this first correction, it was very, very steep, very steep, and very uh, powerful. So that is one more reason to get with the divergence that I would say one more move, at least to the minus 618, and to retest this bottom, uh, despite the uptrend, is a realistic potential. Usually, if the first correction on the hourly chart is this steep, then you do get to the minus 618 target, which is at 162.90. So that's a portal level. That right in here, 163, 162.50, is a bouncing spot. And if price gets there, I would expect it to bounce, but I would want a confirmation of price to confirm that uh, analysis. Otherwise, you know, you never know. It could drop further than than we might think. Let's see. In the meantime, of course, we stopped at the minus two seven two target, and uh, as I said, there could be still a fall to the minus six eighteen. But from where? How far could it be from here? Or could it be from the 382? It's both are possible. The only thing is that we are at the bottom of a potential channel, so this could give bounce reason to bounce. For example, 2382 or 250, then we might see some struggle, or maybe even higher before we might fall to the 618. That's something that could happen: a bounce here before we move to the target, and then up again. You know how the pound likes to make these zigzags up and down, so it, it's definitely possible. Well, and one thing we can keep an eye on is maybe a trend line like this, a break above that could mean we make the move up to uh, these points. Here too though, just like the uh, euro, the pound is flat in its moving averages at the moment. The 15 minute band, green and black band, are sideways. So here to waiting for a direction makes sense, although uh, the pound likes to spike up and down more during intraday trading, whereas the euro, if it has a direction during the day, it usually doesn't reverse gears that much as the pound can. So there's a bit of a, uh, a currency difference there between the two of them, it's a characteristic difference. So let's see. Are we good to keep an eye on this trend line, as I said, this trend line, uh, these support levels, and these resistance levels, and then we'll see um, how price responds to those to those levels. Waiting for price action, of course, always a good thing for confirmation. I don't really have uh, a fa I mean a favorite. All I know though is that there are reversal signs. There is an uptrend. There is a strong downside on the uh, one-hour chart, which leads me to believe that there is. A likelihood to move down out down to the target, but it could be from higher, and that lower area could be a bouncing spot. So something like this, up, down, up, might definitely play out. But I'll keep an eye on those trend lines and fib levels to uh, and as support of resistance to see if that indeed materializes. How about the dollar yen? The dollar yen moving down despite the uptrend and uh, 
pretty choppily here the last few hours. That happened right at the or the bottom of the uptrend channel that I have. Roughly speaking. So you can see roughly at the bottom of the uptrend channel, even if we break out of this one though, this is still a strong uptrend in my opinion because we broke out of the daily top. And that itself, of course, is a support level, 103.70, logically. But even these levels I consider support. And if price were to break down, I would still expect support at these levels for the uptrend to continue. Only if really price were to drastically fall and break this level would I not regard as an uptrend that this was then somehow a, a, a very small weekly breakout above 103.70 and that was then a very small only 170 pip break of the top which is not what I expect now. It's not usual. Normally we are having a, a breakout of this purple triangle so and a breakout of a bigger weekly trend as you can see obviously here look at this so therefore I wouldn't expect this breakout to stop now if we do move down I would expect a bounce and a move up to 111 anywhere between 109 and 111 I would expect actually 111 but I want to be more safe and say okay roughly between 109 and 111 at the moment that would be the target. So any downside that stays above 101.60 for surely, I would think it should, it should see that upside to 111. And we should see this trend, triangle, and breakout continue to that level. So that's what I'm expecting. So anything basically a small retracement now, I expect upside. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the best spot to go long because it still could make a bigger pullback. So I'd rather wait for that pullback to finish. So let's go to the one-hour chart. And you can see we can put a trend line on top of these tops like this. A break of that trend line could already be a very uh, interesting trade setup for more upside. Or, of course, if it does continue this correction and does move forward like that or, or downwards like this, then I'll be looking for some clear signals off of these levels for a bounce to the upside and continuation of the trend. Hope it makes sense what I'm looking at. Let's take a look quick at 15. 15 is just pretty choppy and every time it fa rises, it falls. That's because we're in a correction now. And when we're in a correction, despite the uptrend, the falls are having more more power at the moment, but that could change as soon as we break out of the purple line. Then we could see the uh, the dynamics change, and we can see the upswing uh, getting more traction. Let's see, uh, I got one question in between from Kruri. Well, first of all, um, welcome. And second of all, the chart you can use, well, what you can do to get this chart is go to admiralmarkets.com. Then open demo account. Click on that, and eventually we'll be able to, to download this MetaTrader 4. And this is what you're looking at, MetaTrader 4, it's or MT4 uh, for short. Once you have that, you have a demo and an MT4 platform, then you can log in and you'll be able to see these price actions and you can open different charts by clicking on this green plus and opening the different currency pairs. Okay, that's good, Curry. Well, then you have to, I'm not sure in which way you meant the question then. 
which chart you use is yeah depends on which currency pairs you like to trade which time frames also depends basically on on you you can choose anything you like it depends on your time availability your personality your trading plan uh, what what you basically want and can trade and what you like to trade so that that really depends take a look at uh, if you want more guidance on that maybe a good thing would could be the trading camp for you go to education and click on trading camp and that would give you more feedback on the you know things and settings and how one could trade that would probably be the best because that would take be too elaborate of a uh, you know to to too elaborate to to discuss now you can put any tool on your chart by going to insert go into indicators and go to trend and then you see moving average and you see all the other indicators as well well folks do you have any any preference we can take a look at the Aussie maybe does anyone else have a preference still how was your New Year's Eve did you have a a lot of fun did you have a lot of fireworks was it quiet? I had a quiet one here, and uh, I was in Ireland, and officially no uh, fireworks allowed, except some official fireworks, which is a bit funny for me, from my cultural perspective. But I guess it's safe, which is uh, I'm sure it's safe, so that that's a good thing. How many of you have New Year's resolutions? Does anyone have it? John says, not me. Me neither, in fact, to be honest. But uh, I think that uh, I think that uh, basically if you're trying to improve month in, month out, it doesn't make sense to wait the whole year for, uh, for New Year's resolutions. And I think really a New Year's resolution only makes sense if you really have a strong desire to reach the goal. If, if the desire is not strong enough, the uh, basically the will to reach the goal is just not big enough and that's why I think many of them fail many of these New Year's resolutions fail just because people don't probably don't put in the uh, the desired effort to really obtain that goal so the goal has to be really really strong enough for people to focus on it then it could work otherwise it's difficult and anyhow who needs the who needs these yearly goals if you can really work uh, day in and day out on improving uh, yourself so I, I don't have one either but I mean there's nothing wrong with it it's just that if I guess if you use it then you know, choose choose one or two that you really want to do well I would say then maybe choosing a lot of them and not implementing fully well let's take a look at the Aussie I don't see any uh, Preferences except Lao has dollar cap. We can take a look at that. And Buren says don't trade gold. So we will skip gold then <laughs> on Buren's advice. Um, but gold is a bit, uh, bit funny indeed. That's true. I don't like it particularly at the moment either. Yeah, <laughs> it is a bit funny indeed. Yeah, definitely agree, Buren. Buren says it's sick. <laughs> Aussie dollar. Let's take a look. Daily chart. You can see very strong the moving averages. Look at the 
power here, look at the uh, angle, I should say, and price was constantly making lower lows and lower highs, and price was below the black band. What is that? A downtrend. So if one ever had a uh, doubt what the trend is, you shouldn't have any more when you look at these moving averages and uh, see how price is below it and how steep the moving averages are. Right? What happened after that? Well, moving averages were flat here, flat here, and then price broke above it. What does that mean? Potential retracement. That's what happened. Then what happened? We went back to the green band. Well, actually, we went back to it, stopped at it, then still poked through it, but then went below it again. What happened there? Well, price stopped at the 50 fib. Then reversed back in the downtrend, the old downtrend, and price was below the black and green band again. So we stayed underneath the black band, and we're still underneath the black band. Where is the black band right now? It is right at 90.30, about 90.30. So this resistance spot, pretty important. As you can see, last time we broke above it, we reversed or retraced. So we are still in that downtrend, but price is also right at support. Therefore, we have the situation where we have a trend in play, but we also have a support or resistance close by. That means that one of the two is going to win. Either the trend is going to continue and break the resistance, or the resistance is going to be strong enough and price is going to use it as a support to bounce. So with that said, let's take a look at 4-hour and you can see price is below the green band, hit the green band and move down from there. And 1-hour chart is just very choppy because of the bigger correction on the 4-hour chart. So from my perspective, uh, I wouldn't want to touch it either below this uh, support here, either above the support, sorry, would want it to, to sell it in this region below the uh, support, not immediately, but to give you an idea, and then above this resistance. That's, of course, the most preferred situation. But what can happen in between, because these price levels are pretty far, we're about halfway, so it's maybe not the best situation to trade because we can maybe make some upside, we can maybe make some downside, and then up, as you can see, there's not much reward to risk here. So not a big fan at the moment. Well, if anything, there is a bit more downside at the moment because you can see the moving averages are red. The price is below it on the 15. So if anything, from an intraday perspective, this looks a bit more bearish at the moment. But uh, let's see, it's price is, despite the red moving averages, price is moving up. So that is a currently counter trend in the 50 minute world. So for me, the only thing that could make sense is it, to see this price move back down again and then break a fractal like that. That could make sense. Otherwise, I would rather wait because this could reverse back up. So once again, either break above the top or break below, below the bottom, or if anything, either wait for a new setup for downside 
or we would need these moving averages to be green, for example, for intraday perspective, which are still red. So there's still some work to be done before this really is in the bullish setup. How about the dollar cat? Let's take a look. Together with uh, with um, Alam. Let's see, four hour chart, let's start with that as always. We see the green band indicating the support. You can see every time we move relatively close to the green band, more or less, we bounce off of it. Not always at the same spot, but you can see as a rough zone what, what, where we do that, right? We can zoom out just a bit more and see that, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a generally a, a good approximation. Of course, there are some reversals sometimes. But, uh, you know, if price is above or below it, usually it's a good idea of um, the trend. This is the green band, as you can see. And it's not been a very smooth trend. There has been some, some parts that uh, price was below it here, here, here here, 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 and here specifically. But most of that price movement to the downside didn't go all too far. Sometimes it did, most sometimes it really didn't go all too far. And this, where I have the X's, it really didn't go anywhere. It was more a retracement, in fact, as you can see, for more upside. In general, also, we have a daily uptrend channel. As you can see here, the price is moving very slowly as well. As we can see, of course, not moving all too impulsively. So back to the four, maybe we can even go to the one hour, take a look. Let me clean up the chart so we everything is new again. One hour chart is very rangy. We see a top here, we see a bottom here. Uh, no clear uh, trend on the one hour chart. Although we have an uptrend on the four hour, you can see that this piece of it is relatively like a range. So the only thing that makes sense to me is if price were to move back, maybe to around here to the bottom, we could maybe see a bounce again like we did here and here. That would make sense. Or a break above this line. Right now we're very close, to, relatively close to this top. That wouldn't make sense. Either from lower or upon the break and maybe hook back and pull and continue. That would, I think, make the only sense here on this dollar cap. Alrighty, how about that EJ? Let's take a look. I'll take everything off again so we start with fresh, fresh view. And uh, let's take a look at it together. Four hour chart. Price was nicely above the band. Right? Awesome how that really the EJ was trending and all these potential long trades. Once you have a trend, trading is simple and sweet. Very nice. Right? Not a rocket science to see, of course, that price remains above the band and how you can capitalize on that on the lower time frame or maybe even on this time frame for that upside potential. So now we have a move back to the green band. As we know, that green band, often enough support and so was it a day ago as well in the year again. A day ago, yesterday, 
price did bounce again off the green band. But so far, what have we seen? Only a limited upside. Let's take a look at the one-hour chart. You can see price hasn't moved too much. It's more like a uh, triangle at best. So if it's a triangle, then the upside break would be with the four-hour trend. The downside break would be with the one-hour trend. Um, basically, if we do break to the downside, I wouldn't be we didn't expect too much downside. The minus 272 target is 140.50. And the upside break would uh, be, want to be careful with 140.30 and um, maybe all of these fibs. But we could see the four hour trend continue up again. Also, from the four hour perspective, you can see fractals here which means if we break above these fractals there's a good chance to go up uh, according to my four hour AO strategy no that is not doesn't apply here sorry Yeah, that's about it, I guess, from the uh, EJ perspective. We can put these trend lines on. It's a rough guideline for um, for up and down. So maybe this one is a bit early. As I said, this is still a four-hour uptrend. So this trend line is a bit a bit early. Pound yen. And you can see that you know you can easily make relative comparisons by using moving averages. The euro yen uh, was one straight rocket. The pound yen was a bigger rocket, but it did have a, a bigger pause here as well. And it hasn't reached the long-term moving averages, the green band as yet. So pound relatively a bit stronger than the euro compared to this yen. But this yen too, pound yen too did make a, a pretty big fall here as you can see on the one hour chart and if we fib that just like we do with the pound then we see that the pound yen actually reached the minus 618 target whereas the pound dollar not yet the price has been pretty choppy here so the same as the EJ if we break above these resistances there could be the four hour uptrend continuation like this arrow All right, let me quickly take a look at 15. 15 is showing a bit more downside at the moment. But it too, relatively uh, slow start. I mean, how do I say, the relatively uh, flat moving averages. All right, let's take a look at the, the next one. Anyone else have a favorite, maybe? Actually, you use these? Surely. We can take a look at that. Got a double bottom here. Couldn't break the bottom, and that's why it's always important, despite a trend, to look at where the support and resistance is, because a support level like that, like 1180, is not a level that necessarily can break automatically, and it didn't. Even though price just moved, moved, moved downwards, it did use the 1180 as a, as a support level and moved up from there. Now, of course, we're close to resistance again. So we we'll have to see, is that a spot, that is a spot that price can move down again. If we eventually do break above it, then we might see a bigger retracement of XAUUSD to the upside. In that case, we could see it move up to 1360, 1430 maybe, and then later on maybe even 15, 1500 or 1530.
So we got two clear lines, uh, two clear levels. This bottom and this top at the moment, and uh, a break of the top, we got space to these levels, as I said, and a break of the bottom, we got space to 1,090, which is the 50 fib of the entire like multi-year slash decade uptrend of the XAU USD. Well, at least that's what I have it on my chart. Maybe it's maybe I if you put the fib a bit differently, it could be somewhere else. Let me know if you have a different 50 fib, but I have it currently at 1,090. I would think that that is uh, I mean there's a st substantial chance that the 50 fib, of course, on gold could be a major level that uh, we shouldn't assume price can break and we should see a bounce off that if I have my fib correctly. I can check it with you here. I have it all the way from the bottom here to the top here so it looks good to me. So you can see 50 fib right in, right in here. This is the weekly chart you can see above the red We'll be targeting this top, this top, and then these bottoms. Below green, we'll be targeting the 1,090, 50 fib. Anything in between these two lines, these two levels, I don't see anything at the moment. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at the AutoCAD. Not a, not one I usually look at, but uh, Buren has a, a trend line, a daily trend line that seems interesting, so let's take a look. Daily downtrend channel. Uh, although we don't necessarily need the channel, although it isn't visually nice to put on the chart, though. And you can see that uh, price is also beneath the green band here, and the green band acting as resistance after we've crossed over here. And all these downsides, very impulsive. So now, too, the upside looking very corrective as the previous ones. Although this could be considered double bottom, so clear line in the sand, this green line, and these tops in here break above it, this could be a bigger reversal to the upside. But for the moment, we are in a downtrend, which means that if we zoom into the one hour chart, yeah, we had a bit of a wacky break here and move up, in fact which means that it's difficult to see a good break, but maybe something like this, you know, connecting these bottoms makes sense. So we're in a triangle like that. And the nice thing about triangles like this is that one has very clear lines in the sand because the advantage of this is by not trading it in here, one doesn't get, like, stuck in a trade forever. Um, one avoids zones and periods of indecision because triangles are indecision although there are sometimes f more likely breakouts right if you have a downtrend triangle then the continuation of the downtrend after the triangle is more likely than a reversal but both in theory could happen and in practice too so the advantage is that one kind of nicely sits on the sideline here until uh, the key level is broken either the uh, green or the brown line, then the choice can be made. Either a trade is immediately taken upon the break of that line and fractal, for example, or one could wait for the break and pull back, or one could break for the break, pull back, and continue. Of course. So that's the difference between a trigger and the actual entry. For the moment, uh, I'm treating these, uh, these lines as a as a trigger, not as an entry, uh, but the brown line could be considered a trigger, as, an entry as well, because this is a downtrend. 
the green line I would not necessarily consider as an entry. I would rather wait for a break, pull back, and continue. Whereas the downtrend, the break looks better to me because we're already set in the downtrend from a bigger time perspective at least. That's how I usually treat the difference between uh, with the trend and counter trend breaks of triangles. But Buren was talking about a daily trend line, so let me take a look. Maybe Buren, were you talking about this upper green line or was it a different line? Okay, cool. So that was the same uh, line that Pierre was talking about. Great stuff. So yeah, that, that's interesting. We do have an impulse here. So from that perspective, plus, you know, this could happen too, indeed, to challenge maybe these tops in here. And if we put a fib on this move up, the main target would be the minus 618. It's possible. That's true. We did have impulses here too, though. And we still got to follow through to the downside. So let's see. There is no divergence between these bottoms. So that would lead me to think that uh, the, the downtrend could continue. Yeah, from a four hour perspective, what I would think the, would be the better, uh, you know, point to to look at a break of this top or this fractal indeed, and a tight stop loss could be below the four-hour fractal here. There's no four-hour fractal yet, but wherever the fractal is here at the moment, in fact, and the target would be the minus six eighteen. Something like that could be a breakout trade indeed setup. But if one waits for a pullback, it would be uh, maybe better R2R maybe a bit, but Alrighty, folks. Let's take a look at um, maybe the Eurod. Last week we had the Eurod. We had this uh, green zone in here. Why was that? Because of the supply and demand zone. And you can see that was a successful. Uh, thought because uh, or analysis because uh, we get a we did get a bounce in that zone and moving up to the upside now also of course price is back at the green band that we know that the green band roughly speaking is the bouncing spot for some bouncing spot at least so together with the supply and demand that was a good bouncing spot for the euro odd on the four hour chart right you can take take a look please here this green band is um, sorry the supply demand zone and the green band. And a daily chart too is back at the uh, black band plus the fact that we have here tops 
right? That too could be a break, pullback, and still one more continuation. Now we do have to realize though from a weekly perspective there could be some resistance here. So I'm not saying that that is an easy level to break. We could have some struggle here and maybe see a bigger uh, retracement. It's possible. We do have a bit of divergence between the tops as well as you can see. So maybe we could make a bigger reversal uh, back to these bottoms. I'm not saying that that's not possible, for, but for the moment this was a bouncing spot for some upside. Now, of course, when we reach this resistance again, then your odd price could struggle and maybe we'll find that bigger down move. But that's something that we'll see, of course, uh, in the future. For the moment, it does look more upside-ish because of the uptrend and the fact that we are closer to support than to resistance. One second, folks. So let's take a look at the one hour chart now. You can see the bounce there. Took a while though. It's not easy. You can see, right, the first time went a bit above it, then I hook back, then again above it, then I hook, hook back, and then move up again, and then continue. It does take some time. So, you know, patience would definitely be required uh, in trading the supply demand zone because you, you do get hook backs. You know, you need to, uh, you need to really fully go for that trading plan if you do otherwise you know the nerves might might uh, might alter that and might make it more difficult to implement that remember what i'm doing here of course is is great with the analysis but most important thing of all is that a forex trader does is is of course follow their trading plan So these are the color moving averages. Let's take a look. And you can see that the 15 minute chart on the Eurod is in the uptrend at the moment. Moving averages are green. That means there's an upslope. The color is just the slope of the moving averages. The price is above them. Doesn't necessarily mean the price will continue up, but this is a potential bouncing spot for more upside. Well, is it something I'm interested in myself? Um, well, it, it could work with a small risk here, maybe. Then again, we're also pretty close to this uh, this band right in here, so probably just wait a bit more still. Because from the uh, one hour and four hour perspective, it seems that to me that there could be a hook back before we go up again. Right? If you look at it this way, we uh, we we made a pretty sturdy correction here, and we've bounced up a decent amount in one shot. So some hook back before we do this, or this could happen. But the 15 does look bullish now, so you know it, it, it could travel further than uh, than we think, maybe necessarily before it makes the hook back. But I rather wait still. How about the euro pound? Let's take a look. 
15 minute chart, let's take a look at the slope of the moving averages. And you can see here why that the euro pound isn't that interesting at the moment. It's just flat at the moment, the 15 minute chart. Really no intraday uh, perspective at the moment. Maybe a break above these tops could be interesting, but uh, nothing I would jump on immediately. If it does push through the tops and we get a small bull flag, then the next break might be interesting, though. But you can see that we're at resistance levels because we have bottoms in here and a top here and tops here. So this entire zone, pretty much resistance. So not really that interesting. Maybe if price were to break below this resistance level or above it from a bigger time frame, as you can see, but on the 15, surely we're stuck in a wedge or kind of like a uh, corrective consolidation pattern. So really, your pound not that interesting at the moment. Let me see if something else is interesting. Maybe let's take a look at the pound odd. It's probably the same as the euro odd, in fact. Let me take a look. Yeah, pretty much the same as the euro odd. Really not much difference there. Let's take a look at the pound. Pound is moving down. Let's take a look at the euro again. Back to the uh, to the euro. Euro is moving a bit up, just slightly. The euro doesn't look like it has any uh, directional guidance as yet. The pound doesn't either. We have, uh, I think, unemployment rate on the Germany in a second. So let's take a look. I definitely want to wait for for some direction on the euro before trading anything today because that's going to be probably you know give some guidance on where the currency could be going to uh, today it's going to be released in one minute in fact Uh, still a minute to go, sorry. So, well, today for me, the euro and pound could be interesting, but I want to see some direction first. Uh, odd USD, uh, maybe a downtrend, but really want to see a break at the bottom or some continuation here on the smaller time frames. Maybe some intraday downside trade possible. Uh, let's see, what else? Kiwi pretty much stuck in a range. Did make a recent bounce though, so maybe if it if it were to continue higher, it could be with the trend already. But it's quite rangy in fact. Uh let's see, dollar cat lower or upon the break. Dollar yen upon the break or lower as well for more upside. The same as the cat. Euro yen what did we say here? Euro yen potential bouncing spot for more upside just like the pound yen. Just like the euro item, pound out as well, in fact. So we can see relatively the same picture across the board. Pound and euro strength versus yen and odd weakness. But recently, all the uh, those pairs have been made retracements, in fact, to the downside. So that's more or less a summary. Oh, thanks, uh, Dushan. Uh, German unemployment change deviation is minus 16K. Minus 16. That would seem bearish to me. 
uh, or is it, no wait, minus, I'm interpreting it wrong, minus 16 may, means maybe that uh, there's less jobs created? I'm not sure now, let me take a look. Yes, it is bearish, okay. It changed the number of unemployed people during the previous month. Fifteen K fifteen K. Um but the forecast was minus one K. Yep. So that is uh fifteen thousand more unemployed people. Well they expected actually a decrease of thousand. And unemployment rates stay the same. But as you can see, no improvement in Germany, though, since uh, since the summer of 2012. Although the increase has been marginal, maybe one could say it's only two tenths of a percent. But still, no, no, no decrease. So, looking more bearish, let's see how that does with the euro, euro is moving up, okay, <laughs> funny, maybe there's some statement, I don't know, in any case, of course, we have bigger news uh, tomorrow and Friday, so the market could also be relatively quiet uh, in expectation of those figures, there's nothing you can do about it really, uh, it could happen, market could be relatively slow until those news events and then accelerate upon the release, of course. As I said, I want a clear direction on the hourly or uh, a good impulse on the 50. I'm not looking for a candle on the 50. I'm looking for a candle on the, on the hourly or a candle or two, maybe. So let's see. Top of the hour is coming now. What do we have now so far? Really nothing. This is a very small hourly candle. It's only the top. The difference between top and bottom is only 16 pips, so there's no direction there. No direction on this hourly, right? Hourly can has to be bigger for it to have a, some some directional guidance or at a good confluence zone. Pound dollar seems to be moving a bit down though. Let's take a look. But that candle too is pretty small. It's only oh my oh my it's only also 17 pips at the moment. Well, in any case, euro, for whatever it's worth, euro ended up bullish, pound dollar bearish, but obviously it's still too early in the, in the game to really to say what the direction could be. I'm open really to both sides, in fact, in a way. I just want to see some, some direction first. Odd USD. Of course, you know, from a bigger perspective, this is an uptrend on euro dollar, pound dollar, just to emphasize, but we do see some reversal signals or retracement signals at least. How about the odd? Really nothing much very clear, so I'll probably just wait and see. There's plenty of time today and this week still to decide. I don't think there's any rush needed. How about the dollar yen? Let me take a look.
So any questions maybe you have for me? I have one question about the trading cap. I'll let me answer that, in fact. Good question. Uh, let's see. Daniel? Um, Dolly is moving down, so I'm, I'm definitely looking for upside on Dolly N, but I want to see some confirmation upon the break of the purple line or a move deeper to, to go for a long from a bounce off those support levels, right? So either this or this or this. So still waiting for that. So regarding the trading cap, well, basically, it helps with um, it, it, it's a special enrollment into. Uh, it, I'm not the one responsible for it, so I'm maybe not the best to explain it. But basically, you get uh, help from professional trader that uh, teaches this, some some type of strategy or explains the strategy or some documents that uh, will help with the creating trading plan. I think. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. This is what I think it is. Um, it's it's a weekly structure in any case that takes you step by step through the um, development of a strategy and and some plans. And you look at uh, I think a couple of strategies, and then you monitor your your performance with those strategies together. Uh, with a mentor, I think that's what it is. Uh, it's uh, you don't have to pay for it, by the way. It is free. The only thing you do need to do, though, is write a motivational letter. Why you want to join? About I think you know it doesn't have to be all too long, but and uh, you also need to fund a live account with the minimum deposit of your country. So here you can apply, just go to Education Trading Camp. It's a four-week course. Week one is introduction, week two is fundamentals, week three is practice, week four is live trading. Uh, it gives you Forex literature, strategies, personal Forex coach, and a path. So here, name, ad address, phone number, and where do you see yourself after one year of trading? That's what you have to write about. After the training, there's no, I don't think there's any requirement. The only thing, as I said, you need to fill this in. Explain where do you see yourself after one year of trading. And you need to open a live account with the minimum deposit of your country. So because there are different minimum deposits, depending on the country, you know, it, it depends. Depends uh, country by country. You would have to figure out what that minimum is. So I don't see any questions uh, anymore. We'll be back next week. Uh, next week. <laughs> Sorry, we'll be back tomorrow, in fact. Uh, we'll take a look at trend lines. We used to talk trend lines today as well, so it'll probably be about the same. But uh, trend lines and moving averages are my favorite tools, so it's sometimes difficult uh, not to use them. Um, so we'll look at that, see how today developed, quick review, but then we'll focus on uh, tomorrow again. And take a look at what we can expect with FOMC. Big announcement because we're interested to see, of course, what uh, the Fed thought upon the first tapering last month. So let's see what that decision has done. Uh, tomorrow there's also a webinar, as I said, with, uh, with Talantala. And that will be looking, I think, at Forex advice, volume spread analysis tomorrow and um, in the evening. Well, folks, thanks for being here, and uh, looking forward to see you tomorrow. Cheers.
The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.